Hi, I'm Morgan from Moto Development Group. We've been working with Capacitive Touch Solutions for years, and today we're going to share some insights about how you can compare existing devices on the market to one another with some simple tests you can run with just your fingers and a basic drawing application. The simplest way to test the performance of a touchscreen is to open up a drawing application like this one and draw diagonal lines across the screen with your finger. You want to make sure that you draw slowly, because if you draw very quickly, there are only a few data points, maybe here, 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 and here, and everything looks like a straight line. If you draw very slowly, then you see all of the nuances of exactly where the touchscreen thinks your finger is. So I'm going to draw an array of lines all the way across, moving my finger very steadily, and you'll see that, for the most part, it tracks very straight, except at the edges where it starts to turn and this is something you'll see on pretty much every touch sensor. It's always difficult to figure out what the finger is doing right at the edge of the screen. Now I'm going to start drawing these lines along the other diagonal and you'll see that again the performance is really quite consistent. So here we have a completed test pattern for an iPhone touch screen. Now we're going to repeat the same test with the Verizon HTC Droid Iris. I'm going to draw the same pattern again just dragging my finger across the screen, nice and slow. And we're going to look for any signs of sort of waviness or nonlinearity, anything that really feels like my finger isn't being tracked accurately by the sensor. You can see here that there is a slight bit of wave to it, but it's pretty slight. It's maybe a half millimeter or less. It's, uh, it's actually doing pretty well. And we're going to repeat that pattern going in the opposite direction. And again, you see that there's some curvature at the edges as my finger comes off the edge of the screen, but by and large it's a pretty respectable performance. We're going to repeat the same test now with a Motorola Droid. I'm going to draw these same lines, just dragging my finger diagonally across the screen, and what we're going to see is that there's a waviness here. There's a sort of a stair-stepping effect that you get in these diagonal lines. And what that amounts to is when you're using something like a keyboard, there's a certain inaccuracy. The waviness here may be a millimeter or two, sometimes it's as much as three millimeters or more of inaccuracy, and that can mean that you hit the wrong key when you're on a really cramped on-screen keyboard. So you can see here that the performance is just nowhere near as straight as we saw with the iPhone. What we have here is a side-by-side -side comparison of all three. We've drawn the pattern on all three of these devices, and you can see that the Droid has a lot of these wavy artifacts, uh, and in practice it makes the keyboard somewhat frustrating to use. The uh, Droid Iris also has some of these artifacts, but not nearly as many. It's clearly considerably more linear and more accurate. And then the iPhone here, which has very, very straight response, it really looks like it's tracking my finger quite precisely all the time. There are a lot of factors in building a top-rate touch solution. Ultimately, though, it all comes down to signal-to-noise ratio, or SNR. This depends on a whole myriad of factors that you can choose in the engineering side, from the type of substrate that you use, the type of conductive material that you use, the voltage you drive it at, the touch controller chip that you use to drive the whole system, and all of the algorithms and things that you use to track the positions of fingers on the surface of the touch sensor. Optimizing these things so that you get the best signal-to-noise ratio gives you a sensor that will perform in a really linear fashion so that exactly what the user draws on the surface of it will be represented just as they expected it. This is the essence of a really good touch sensor on a consumer device.